the book of love. 1 Corinthians 13 says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophecy, and I know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I receive no benefit. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envious. Love does not boast. It is not puffed up. It is not rude. It is not self-serving. It is not easily angered or resentful. It is not glad about injustice, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. At the age of 21, after losing my life's ultimate dream of professional football, I once lost my faith in God, but I could not walk away from God because I never lost my love for God. I kept feeling him tugging on me, pulling on me, literally wooing me. I saw him in nature, in the wind, the rain, the trees. He was in songs. He was in my dreams. He would not leave me alone. Even though I blamed him for allowing me to fail, when nothing else could help, it truly was his love that lifted me. I was just like the prophet Jeremiah who wept bitterly over the broken relationship between God and his people Israel in Jeremiah 20. In my defense of him, it seemed the more I was mocked, marked, and marred, I could hear the voice of my haters saying to me, but where is your God now? They derided me from my childhood and upward because of my faith. But what they did not realize, and even what I did not realize, is that my faith in him was driven by my great love for him. My confidence in him was a product of my trust that he would withhold no good thing from me and that he would give me the desires of my heart. I never even considered losing. Failure was never an option nor did it even enter my mind. I had on blinders, and my eyes were focused on the prize. But yet, I never attained or obtained my dream. How horrible I felt. I was grieved and bereaved, because with my lost dreams, what I received was shipwreck and a broken heart. When my dreams were not realized, it felt as if I sat perpetually at a funeral with no relief in sight. My pain was my agony. My agony was my pain. My heart hurt. I was inconsolable and it was all too heavy for me to bear. The world was a dark place to me. My days were gloomy, and my nights, they seemed so endless. I was barely past my boyhood, and I wondered, what in God's name had I done that was so bad to deserve his abandonment 
of me? Why would he allow me to grind and sacrifice to transform my body into a physically fit machine and not allow me the opportunity to taste of what I was so close to having? But as the prophet Jeremiah proclaimed further in that same 20th chapter of his book, I could no longer hold back as his words were like a burning fire that was shut up inside of my bones. I loved God too much to ever live without him. I had to seek a reasonable compromise and hold on to him forever. The Song of Solomon, chapter three and verse number four says, I was but a little away from them. Hmm. Away from the crowd, away from the haters, away from the detractors and the distractors. When I came face to face with him, who is the love of my soul, I took him by the hands and I did not let him go. In Psalms 42 and 1, the writer proclaims, As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. Lord, when the wind blows, it is like you and me at our best. Feels like the Sunday evenings of my youth. Cool breezes in October in the fall of the year. Gathered at St. Luke's or Pilgrim Church as Jack Jr. is applying pressure to the B3 organ. Joe Jr. strategically stringing the lead guitar. His brother David is slapping and perfectly plucking the bass I'm dropping the sticks with precision while crashing and riding and rolling out on the percussions. The saints are rejoicing and the children are dancing all in one accord and in unison. And at our best, we still strove to perfect our praise and to raise our worship to God. We would all walk away with a sense of pride, knowing that giving our very best had provoked the very presence of God to arise among us. We felt like the disciples, that it was good for us to be here. And even now, as an older man, I reminisce. I long for those yesteryears, those best of years, wishing, wanting, waiting for the stirring of those fall winds from the spring of our lives, knowing that if it never is again, it once was the best thing ever. A place where it was always howdy howdy and the Sabbath had no end. A place where every day is Sunday and there is never a goodbye. At our best, we are reflections of the very best years of our lives that euphoric feel from a place, a time, a season that has now long escaped us. But in one deep breath, we are revived again. Blow, O thou great wind, 
blow upon me and my great love again.